Valid or invalid? Let us discuss. What's up guys, Open Here we are to do a nice little breakdown slash discussion of whether or not this statement made by Nanashi, the goddess servant of Arthur, the king of chaos in chapter 125 of Four Nights of the Apocalypse is valid and should be taken as credible for Lance's scaling, or if we should throw it straight out the window because it makes no sense, it's trash, makes Lance too powerful, all this. All that, we got a whole decent chunk to talk about. So let's not waste any more time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hop right on into it. Edit me, I summon you. Ready? Three, two, one, go. What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact, I do happen to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And uh, by the end of this chapter, a uh, certain someone tends to... <laughs> they tend to start keeping... The Keeping it on him and having it on him at all times. Lance, just like me, for real, for real, can't wait for him to hit the Kagodobachi pose. But all that aside, that's not what we're here for for Lance. We're going to talk about his scaling and how powerful he should be post time skip, if he should be more powerful, if he should get nerfed, a whole bunch of other stuff in regards to Lance's power another day. What we're here to specifically talk about right here in the now is not any of this, but one particular statement that Nanashi makes. A statement that has had the whole community. At least not the whole community, like, if you're not, like, a gen, like, you have to be a little bit of a power scaler to care. Most people don't care, they kind of just glaze over the statement, but if you are at all a Four Nights slash Seven Only Sins duology power scaler, this statement, huge, massive, gargantuan. Heck, I already made a video talking about the implications of this statement, if it's to be taken at face value, going off everything, I talked about that in depth, but especially with the release of the volume extras for, I believe, volume 16, 17, I forget which one it is, people have been throwing this statement into contention, throwing it under the bus, throwing it into trash. People believe that it is inconsistent, it is unreliable, and that everything about this statement seems a little bit too fishy. It smells a little bit too fishy to be valid. But of course, what's my opinion on that? Do I think the statement's valid? Do I think we use this to scale lance? Do I think... This should be taken as credible, and we should use it whenever we're talking about Lance, and whether it be a cross-verse discussion, when discussing his overall AP and speed and strength, as the statement mentions, and or inverse stuff, when we need to talk about his power level in comparison to other characters. And when I say power level, I don't mean combat class. We haven't gotten a combat... Have we? When's the last time we got a combat class statement? Like a full, full combat class statement. Like, breaking it down and everything. I swear, it's been, like, since the mid-200s. I don't think we've gotten one. Like, Ludashell doesn't have a breakdown. Neither does Mael. Mael doesn't even have, like, a specific number. It's just over 200,000. Yes, yeah, so we haven't gotten a combat class statement in a while. But, of course, talking so vaguely about the statement, let me just read this statement out verbatim to y'all. <coughs> like, hold on, then Anashi voice too. <coughs> I hear that you tussled with Arthur once. He said you outclass any seasoned warrior he's seen, from your intuition to your courage and strength. So, there are two major big old juicy words that are in contention here. It is outclassed and strength. These are the two slobber the heavy hitters, the things that got the whole community up in a tizzy, and here's why. Notably, Arthur... They didn't really see that many people. It's weird to think about, but Arthur for majority of the series is either incapacitated, as in, like, bros knocked out, B, not introduced yet for the entire of the early series, C, has a sword through his chest, aka a fancy variation of incapacitated, and or D, not interacting with our main cast. Arthur is a very rare character in the entire original series. I think, like, if you were to compile all of Arthur's screen time, even with the entire last chunk of the series, the Chaos Arc, being all about him, it probably totals to less than 10 chapters? Maybe at most 15. Arthur has relatively little screen time, and as a byproduct of that, this statement has many more limitations than what would immediately be implied. Because, of course, outclassing anyone Arthur's ever seen in strength will realize Arthur hasn't seen that many people. He never saw the Demon King. He never saw the... Well, he may have seen the Supreme Deity. It depends on how you think... Cursed by Light went. We don't ever see him interfere, though in the novelization it's confirmed that Merlin somewhat interferes. So, if you think Merlin technically saw the Supreme Deity, and Arthur by proxy be, being with Merlin saw the Supreme Deity, then you could get a little bit, a little bit kooky. But even still, he never saw this Demon King, never saw the Supreme Deity, never saw Final Shine Escanor, never saw 
Peck, the one ultimate Escanor, never saw Drolls Dance Aunt Diane, never saw a full wings king, like, well, saw a full wings king, legally speaking, but that's the thing, there's so little that Arthur had seen, and even in the alternate timelines where they did fight Kath, we don't know what Arthur saw. Remember, Meliodas broke out of that timeline relatively quickly, to the point where Kath couldn't even consume him before Meliodas went, ah, my brain, and Arthur seemed to be completely free, he didn't even seem bothered at all by Kath's timeline, be like, whoa, that was such a weird way to say that, Kath's timeline manipulation meaning that you can't even say that arthur saw the fatigued the omega fatigue sins after their battle with the demon king which kind of makes the statement a little bit rough right because if he didn't see anything like especially since the statement is see seen it's a little bit rough right a little bit wag a little bit ooey a little bit gooey so it probably doesn't mean all to my... not that one not that one ah yeah, actually, it is this one. Arthur saw this. He saw King Mel. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing about King Mel. Notably, he is most likely very, 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 very suppressed. Not necessarily... Okay, maybe not that many berries, but he is holding back. Like, we know in Seven Deadly Sins in particular, if you do not have that intent, that need, that desire to get somebody up out of here... Your, like, stats drop massively. This is, like, a big part of the Demon King fight. Like, the Demon King even points out, bro, your blade is dull, your intentions whack, because of that, I'm going to take over your brother even more. And it's because Mel is holding back. And we see this throughout this entire encounter. They go even, they swing, they have a little dancey dance, but then Tristan gets in the way, causes issues, Mel then transcends in order to ward Arthur off so he can protect Tristan. Tristan begins to generally tweak out a little bit. Then Meliodas is forced to protect Tristan. And he's, and note, it's even noted here that... Meliodas wouldn't actually have been hurt at all by Arthur's attack if Tristan didn't interfere, and this is notably base Meliodas, so that doesn't mean that Arthur saw a demon mark, or AM, or a possible reawakened true battle. None of that's confirmed. But here's the thing. King Mel on his own, even while Omega Giga suppressed, assuming he's to the same level of suppressed as... Eight, well, no, at, the, at this time in the manga, 16 years ago, assuming he's as suppressed as his 16 and a half years ago self, who was mentally conflicted when fighting the Demon King who was possessing Zeldris, that's still beyond Demon King level. Like, and no offense to Arthur, but in terms of direct emotional connection, I'd assume Meliodas has more with his flesh and blood brother rather than this kid he's worried about from 16 plus years ago. So it's presumable that this guy is even more suppressed than he was then, and that's assuming he's got no stronger. And remember, the Mel that was beasting on the Demon King was mentally nerfed, suppressed, holding back, and all that, and was still beasting on him. So presumably this same Arthur, that Mel, this same Meliodas that Arthur is witnessing should be at, at bare minimum, suppressed start of DK Zelfi's elders. At bare minimum, he shouldn't be at that same level that he was then. Which clears a fat chunk of the original series. It knocks the whole Ten Commandments off the list. Zeldris included, Prime Mel included. It knocks all the Archangels off the list. Mael included, Ludashell included, and obviously the two lesser Archangels. It knocks so many characters off the list. The only ones it doesn't knock, though, it doesn't knock Lance. Well, no, Lance's father in particular. It doesn't necessarily knock Escanor, and it doesn't necessarily knock King I guess, yeah, because Prime Demon King scaling. And heck, with the... I mean, it really depends. It depends. I mean, I, yeah, I guess it doesn't even really knock Curse by Light Diane off either, if she, since she does damage the Supreme Deity with some regular rocks. So that's the thing. There's still a bunch of characters that are perfectly fine and unaffected by the statement, simply due to Mel's mentality. Of course, you can definitely make the argument that, well, you know, Arthur does see DM Mel for a hot second here, so shouldn't DM Mel be included? I guess, and you can. Like, no, don't get me wrong. If I'm ever, when I do Lance versus battles, I'm going to be taking the statement more charitably than I am here. But I'm I'm giving you this super duper low end estimation of it to explain why I still think the feat is valid. Well, the statement's valid, and there are no real anti feats to it. But this is the highest you can take it. DM King Mel, who I'm, I know this sounds weird, but in a similar way to how Super Saiyan Blue Goku can lower himself to a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of his base to where regular lasers can harm him. DML does not automatically have to be stronger than base Mel. He doesn't have to be. 
Like, notably, we see these two go relative for the most part while they're just clashing swords and base and Mel's holding back. And then he goes DM, summons Trillian Dark, hits Arthur with it. And sure, he knocks Arthur away, but, like, it's nothing all too crazy. He doesn't really take any damage from it. And he was, once again, pretty much chilling the entire time. So, it's highly unlikely that Mel actually went all out in DM here. But still, once again, the lowest you can take it is suppressed post-perg Mel from end of original series. That's about as low as you can go. And of course, that's still crazy. But what is it? What is it about this statement here that has so many people up in, up in arms and be like, no, this can't be valid. It doesn't make sense. Feet silver statements. I think people don't want Lance to be strong. And, like, I don't blame them. There, there, are other, there are other series out there where I don't like characters being so strong. But here's the thing. There's nothing that Lance has that can necessarily be used as an anti-feat. Like, there, there's not Like, it's, re it's really hard. You can kind of pull out one. But let's quickly cover all of Lance's major battles against named characters and explain why this statement that would, you know, let's just say, put him above suppressed, mentally nerfed, post perg Mel, why it has no contradictions. Number one, Nanashi himself. A lot of people have been trying to use Nanashi and his statement from the volume extras saying that, oh, he's not on the level or he doesn't surpass the level of the four archangels. That can easily be interpreted as Nanashi couldn't win if he jumped them all and like it was a 1v4, not just the fact that he's not on their level, but even if he wasn't on their level, which is fine, whatever, it doesn't matter because Nanashi's not relative to Lance. He doesn't leave a scratch on him. Like, once. Like, he doesn't land a singular hit on Lance. Lance is clearly the dominant aggressor throughout the entire fight, just like just like Meliodas and base post-perg would dog walk any Archangel tier fighter. Same as that. Pri this is prime Mael versus post-perg Mel, by the way. Base post-perg Mel. This is basically the exact same fight verbatim, just remove the magic aura. That's just how it is. Nanashi's not at all relative to Lance, so this doesn't downscale Lance at all. It just makes Nanashi look more embarrassing if you really lowly interpret that statement from the volume extras. Let's see. What about Lance's other fight? Hmm, hmm, I wonder. I wonder where we could get, oh, Fittich. And, like, the rest of the four, not the four evils, the Dark Talismans. Hmm, look at all the relativity that Fittich is showing here. Look at all these hits he's landing on Lance. Look at all this dodging that Lance has forced to... Oh, look at all the damage and cuts that Lance has... Oh, oh, wait. Wait, he's not taking any damage? Oh, because cause Fittich isn't... He's a relative? And, and Lance is bullying him? That the entire encounter? Because he's just that much stronger? And Fittich doesn't land a singular hit? Like, oh yeah, that. And what does Fittich do? He runs. Because he realizes that Lance is him? And then the moment he tries to run, Lance... With a random, a random dagger, by the way. I don't think Donnie's dagger is secretly a sacred treasure tier weapon, considering it shatters. He fires off a casual shining road in base, and look what it does to Fittich. Absolutely vaporizes, bro. So, uh, how does this an anti feat? How does this downscale Lance at all? Oh, right, it doesn't. Because, like, Fittich is not relative to Lance at all. He doesn't land a singular hit. Even on a base suppressed Lance, which is explicitly noted to be a base suppressed Lance who is not flexing his magic aura as he does here. Which is a clear amp. Oh, yeah, you remember Meliodas? Remember Meliodas fighting Arthur? You know, this Arthur who's, you know, like, going up against this DML. And he's eating hits from him just fine. You know, able to react to and block, you know, 16 years of training King Mel. Who's worried for his kingdom and worried about Arthur specifically. Meaning he's most likely, at bare minimum, equal, if not stronger than he was 16 years ago. Yeah, you see how Mel is struggling to kind of subdue and hold this Arthur down? Um... It's infamous that, like, 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 <laughs> like, y'all. Like, oh. Same rocket science, y'all. I've, I've been seeing a bunch of people say, feats over statements, feats over statements, feats over, like, we have feats. Sure. Do I think there are caveats to this? Absolutely. Or else the narrative falls apart. But, like, we, y'all, we, we have feats. We literally, we literally see him perform better against Arthur while base and suppressed in comparison to King Mel. Like, like, we see this verbatim. Lance, once again, does not get tagged once by Arthur. And Arthur consistently gets Perception Blitz. You could argue he's using, like, some variation of Snatch here. We know his magic is called Hazy Moon, which, in my opinion, there's going to be a whole video on that, but I think it has something to do with, like, reflecting the abilities of those he sees, kind of like how the moon reflects light 
from the sun, but that's another theory for another time. But, like, if you don't think he has any variation of Snatch, he's literally just Perception Blitzing Arthur. Like, hits Arthur before he can realize is breaking his nose and causing him to bleed, knocking him away. Perception Blitzes Arthur, appears right behind him when Arthur goes to dodge, and then kicks him away before Arthur can react. Chaos King Arthur, by the way. Chaos, like, Chaos King Arthur, arguably the strongest character in the series. Swings, whiffs, gets his teeth torn out before he can perceive anything, activates Chaos Eyes to heal himself, yaps, gets literally stepped up, like, like y'all, y'all keep saying feats over statements. We have the feats. We, we have the feats. And here's the thing. The one time, and I repeat, the singular time that Lance gets tagged, it's not even by Arthur. Like, legitimately, the only time Lance genuinely gets tagged is when he gets caught off guard by, you know, the creator of the verse trying to lunge out to protect its host. Why? Why did it lunge out to protect its host? Arthur, could you tell us real quick? <clears throat> you see, Chaos was merely acting on instinct to protect its vessel. If I perish, it, lo it would lose its place in the world. Think of it as a kind of mindless will, separate from my own. That's why not even Lancelot can read its moves. Oh. So, remember, this casual base Lancelot was apparently more of a threat to Arthur's life, which makes sense. I, once again, I do believe Mel is holding back a lot. But, once again, if we're talking feats versus statements, Chaos itself was like, wait a minute, Arthur can die here. Let me show up. Let me, let me smack my multi vein throbbing meat on the table and show up and stop this man before he accidentally offs my host and I'm now free in the world again, which I guess I don't want. Like, like this, is, this is just verbatim. And then he activates his true strength. And then Arthur gets looking like this. Sure, do I think Arthur was ever actually in any real danger? Eh, not really. I don't know. For the sake of, the, for the sake of my sanity, I can't have Arthur in any real danger. But these are feats, y'all. These are feats. He just he just verbatim performs better than Mel does. And before we actually get to see how he would perform against a slightly more serious Arthur with his full power, Arthur dips. Because of the threat of the rest of the sins. Plus Lance. And I'll admit, you know, like we, we literally see full power Lance, or presumably something close to full power Lance, not be able to tag this Arthur. But still, here are the feats! That coincide with this statement, not this statement, but with this statement. Everything, everything's here, y'all. Everything's here. This isn't, like, it's not anything too crazy. This has just been established. In fact, it's kind of like this statement is just reinforcing the feats we've already gotten. And once again, let's just cover the rest of Lance's fights, because they're only like, what, two more to go, and one of them's off screen, I do believe. Because the other major fight we need to cover is this one, where he just, you know, with zero damage on him, and of course with Gawain here, but like... I don't think I need to convince you that Lance and Gawain are not relative, but literally off screens, six whole demons, six whole demons with Gawain there, but like no damage, nothing. We have no idea the level of these demons either. Like they aren't, we don't get statements about these, this group, like we do the six nights of darkness where we know they're not commandment level, but like clearly Lance is above commandment level. So like no, nothing, nothing wrong comes with this statement. It's why I'm so shocked people don't like it. I get it if you want to, like, slop it off, right? And here's the final. Here's the final one I want to hit on before we get into why people may not like this statement, even though, at least so far, I've not been able to find anything that would contradict it. Because Lance, I think he's only been hit once. I think it literally just is that one fight. Yeah, I think it's, and he, he hits himself with, with Shining Road because Nanashi doesn't dodge. So, I think that's it. But once again, in his battle with Jericho, Jericho does not land a single hit on the man. Like, they had this whole interaction, and Jericho just does not hit him. And the only reason Jericho even survives this fight, and is manages to escape, quote-unquote, is because, once again, Lance is clearly mentally conflicted because he considers his master Jericho family. That's it. That's all we got. So, this is all of Lance's battles. The only one I've left out was Sin destroying the chaotic dead who also do no damage to him and get consistently one shot by presumably a casual shining road what is like what is exactly wrong the only way i could see someone having an issue with this statement is if people try to use it to get him above arthur but no one's doing that at least i'm not i'm not and i haven't seen anyone try to do that because arthur probably wouldn't count because he's talking about warriors he's seen so that's about it the highest you can take this statement is that lance at full power is likely stronger than dml 
for like AM Mel, if you want to assume that Arthur knows the multiplier for AM, which I think is kind of weird because I don't think he should. But I mean, he does have he he took a glance at AM Meliodas, so he knows that it exists. But I'm not sure if he knows the multiplier or anything like that. But that's the highest you can take it. And even then, once again, no anti feats against that. I think the same is valid. I don't think there's anything in the series that rebuffs it. If you guys have anything that rebuffs it, let me know. I don't know. I don't really I don't really see the issue. I just assume people are worried for the narrative continuity and what this would have as a backwash impact on much more prominent and important characters. Like, I know a lot of people probably wouldn't like this because it does put Lance above popular characters like Meow. Popular characters like all the commandments, essentially. Popular characters like earlier variations of Mel himself or earlier variations of Bond. But there's still hope. There's still room. There's still ways to wiggle and interpret it due to the lack of information that Arthur has. And there are feats to back it up. So ultimately, I think the statement is valid. But please let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave unvalid. Leave unvalid. Actually, no, that'd be a little bit too confusing because, like, we're talking about whether or not the statement's valid or not. Leave. How? What? What would I use? Because I'm trying to. Because unvalid felt so good. You know what? We'll go with unvalid. We'll go with unvalid just because, like, it's different from invalid. But please let me know if you think the statement is invalid and there are anti feats or any other statements that contradict this in the comment section down below. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do happen to have a picture down below where you can support me for as low as one, kind of one, dollar a month. You get things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member to the channel for as low as $3 a month to get the same perks and more. So, those perks include the live reaction to the very next chapter of Four Nights of the Apocalypse, and also add free variations of all my videos. Now, I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Once again, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Dago the Pencil, writing off. I'd like to give a thank you to Art3 Dollar members, O'Connor Plays, Red Wolf 4765, Greyhound, and Atkins Void. I'd like to give another big thank you to our $5 dollar patrons, Victor, Sean, RNG Master, Midnight Gemlord, Metal Solid Crisis, Kevin, Igneal, and Demix LND. And another scrumptious thank you to our $7 members, Autumn, Mornings, Lazo, and Sick Addiction. And I'd like to give another hefty thank you to our $10 patrons, Robbie Uchiha, Joaquin, Idemokami, and China Doll 9 and I'd like to give a another gargantuan thank you to our $20 member, Alex Ice Rose. And I'd like to give a thank you, an amazing thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder. And another thank you to our next $25 patron, Ehack1. And a final, final thank you to our final $25 patron, Steeron.